and hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. So in the previous Lua tutorial, we talked about how to work with math in Lua. We talked about the math library, so using things like math.py, math.seal, math.fleur. But how do we work with strings? Now if you can remember, strings are text. So if I say local, and let's say x is, or let's just call this string, str, is equal to hello world. That is a string. So, yeah, so that's a string. So we print str, and we just go here, and just say lua main.lua. There we go, hello world. So it's just basically normal text. I can mean double or single quotes. It doesn't really matter. If you want to check the type of it, you can say type, and we can just pass it in like this, and that will give you a type of string. Same if we were to do this in double quotes, because they are the same thing. It's just a piece of text. If you're coming from C or something like that, uh, basically strings are even characters. So characters are still seen as strings. There is no such thing as a normal just character. Anyways. If you want to have a string that lasts multiple lines, so it goes down multiple lines, you can start with two brackets, so square brackets, and two ending square brackets. This will last multiple lines. If I go like this, this will actually be seen as we're seeing it right now. So if we were to print this, then as you can see, it's hello world, and now there's a space here, and there's a tab here in the front. If we were to just remove that tab, then hello world, my name is Jack, and here we can just move that back here so we don't get that extra space. And in here we can also say 2 plus 2 is, is equal to 4. Do that, run that, as you can see we can go multiple lines down. Take note that if you were to indent this, which means tabbing it up, as you can see now it still has tabs, or now it also has tabs here. So just be careful, this actually takes your strings very literally. So to get the length of a string, it is relatively simple. If we go here and put a hashtag there, that will get the length of a string. So if we run this, then as you can see, we get 11. If we were to count this, as you can see, it actually tells you it's 11 bytes. And a character is a byte. A character is just like ABC or a space or whatnot. 11 bytes, that basically means it's 11 characters long. If we were to actually select this and go down here, as you can see, it says 11 selected, which means it is really 11. Cool. Take note that just because this right here is a variable, you can still put that hashtag right here. Because it will give you this, it will basically mean the same thing. Because remember this is just a container. If we could, we could basically have just said this instead. And it would have basically been the same thing. It's just with a current variable, it's much easier. So if you haven't seen my video on variables yet, I recommend you do because it can be really handy. If you want to add to a string, so let's say we were to remove this hello world. So now it's just hello. Print that out, we get hello. If you want to add to that string, you can say dot dot, and then here we can just say world. That will append to the string, so add to the end of the string. So there, hello world. Take note that that space is left there intentionally. If I were to remove that space, then it would just be one long hello world. Same thing here, we don't need to do it there, we can always just do it here. Hello and then dot dot world. Gives the same thing because remember this is just a container, it just it's just like a stand in for this. Let's say we have a number. So I'm going to create two new variables. So local x with my bad, local x and y. Or actually I'm going to make them a separate line. So local x, I'm gonna make that 22. If we were to print the type of x, we would get a number because that is not a string, that's a number. If we were to make do this, then that would be a string because now it has quotation marks around it. Sometimes you want to be able to convert this into a string. So let's go local and I'm just going to call this y and I'm going to make it equal to two string and this will convert your integer to a string. So if I were to just add a comma here and say type of y, and you see we get number and we get string, because this right here, that's a string. 
because it has been converted this number to a string. Take note that just like before, if we were to do this, then we won't even need this one right here. And we can just remove that. And now instead of saying int, it will say, or number, it will say string. So you can see right there. You can also do this. So if we go like that, instead of 22, go like this, and just instead of 22, we say x. It will say string because, because this is the same as what we just did before this. So it's the same as doing that. So let's talk about escape characters. So let's just go here. So I'm going to create a print statement with a lot of escape characters in them. So there's a lot of escape characters to choose from. So let's start. So hello. And then if you use a backslash, you can create an escape character. Escape character allows you to add things to text. So if we were to, uh, let, let's say we wanted to have this on two different lines. So hello world on two different lines. One way you can do it is we can create two print statements and then say world. Now, if we were to print this out, we'd get hello world. Another way we could have done this is instead of using quotation marks, we could have used brackets. So like that, and then like that, and then if I were to just go to the next line, I could have got a world. And you see, you get the same output. Both of the methods are kind of tedious though. So one way we can actually get around this is by using escape characters. So escape characters start with a backslash, and then what you want to escape. So in this case, you want to escape in. So Backslash n, that means new line. So if I say world, now if we print this, we get hello and then a new line, world. So there's a lot of escape characters to choose from. Backslash t will give you a tab. And let's say I add a bunch of exclamation marks. Now there's a tab here. So we could have, we can use backslash t or we can uh, add a comma and then we can remove the backslash t. So it's basically up to you what you want to do. Move it and give you a tab. Anyway, so let's keep that backslash t there so we can just use it like this as examples. To get a vertical tab, we can just say backslash v, and here we can say I am Steve. Do that, and now it says goes to goes downwards and then it continues. So that's a vertical tab. To let's say you actually want a backslash, how would you actually go about getting a backslash? Well, we can just use two backslashes. That will escape a backslash and give you a backslash. So let's say Steve slash Netsu. If we run that, as you can see, I am Steve slash Netsu. If you want to use a forward slash, you don't need to escape it. You can just use forward slash. You see? So yeah. Anyways. So let's say you want to have double quotes because currently the text is inside of double quotes. One thing we can do is we can change this to single quotes. Let's work and do everything the same, but it's not quite the same. So I would like to just go like this. And let's create a double quote there. So backslash double quote, and in here, backslash double quote. Do that, and as you can see, hello, I am in double quote, Steve, slash Netsu, double quote. If we were to remove this backslash, it will actually cause an error because now it just gets confused. So you can see there. So we do not want to remove those backslashes. What about if you use single quotes? How would you add a single quote? Let's say we want to add a single quote here. So now it would be like that, backslash single quote. Do that, and now we can have a backslash single quote there as well. If we were to remove that backslash, then it will cause an error. And there we go. So those are just some of the escape characters. There's a lot more. I'm not going to cover all of them because that will take an entire video. So yeah, now let's just uh, go back to printing out string. I'm just adding world here. Now we print this, we get hello world. Okay. So to convert an entire string to lowercase, we can just say string. That will call upon the string library, just like with math.random, this is like string, and then dot lower, and that will cause whatever is passed in to become a lowercase. So all of the characters will now be lowercase. We can do the same with uppercase or upper. Do that and now everything is uppercase. To get the length of a string, you have your choice of, of course, just using a hashtag. 
So I'll go like that. And as you can see, now it's 11. But you can also do this. So string and then dot length. Or just dot length. But anyways, to do that, we get 11 as well. So it's up to your, it's your preference, you know. Which do you want to use? Do you want to use hashtag or do you want to use length? To get a substring from a string, you can just go here and we can say sub instead. And then we pass in the string we want. We're able to start, so at index 1. And let's see, let's say you want to get the entire hello. That would be these right there. As you can see down here, 5 selected. So I'm just going to pass in 5 here. So from 1 to 5, and we get hello. If we were to pass in from uh, 7 to, let's just go 99. Then we get the end of the string. Reason it's 7 is because this is 6, that space, that would be index 6. So we start at 7 and we just say 99 because we know it's the last word in the string and we don't really care too much about counting it specifically. To get a character from ASCII to a character, we can just say string.char and here we can pass in the number, so 65. That would be an A, yes, capital A. Don't know what ASCII is, don't worry, you don't need it to know Lua, or you don't need to know that to know Lua. But yeah, if you do know it, then good for you. So that's to turn an ASCII character into a character. So, yeah. We can also change it from ASCII to, or my, I mean from character to ASCII by going byte. And let's say we want to convert capital A into a byte, now we get 65. The same thing, but just the other way around now. Lowercase a, and now you should get 97. So in a second, it's kind of swap between them. If you have more than one thing, then you can, let's say, uh, let's say um, this is str. Now you can convert that entire thing by going 1 and let's just say 99. Do that, and as you can see, the entire thing was converted. So if we just resize it a little bit, as you can see, there we go. If you want to repeat something, then it is rather simple. You just say rep for repeat. What you want to repeat, so in this case, let's say you want to repeat hello. How many times you want to repeat it? So let's say you want to repeat it 10 times and then what to separate them by. Uh, I'm just going to say a space. I don't really matter. And then we can see hello, 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 hello. You can also change this. So let's say comma. And now it's separated by commas. To format a string, it is rather simple. So we can just say format. And now this can be kind of useful. So let's say we have pi. Now pi, let's say we want to get it to, so this will allow us to get pi to the second value. So it's 3.14, this will give us 3.14. I'll explain in a second on how that works. And let's say I want to say um, my age and here I can say a percentage i, I believe. And that will allow us to put an integer. So what we can do is we can go here, and now we can add our things. So I'm going to say math.pi, and that will give us pi. And here I'm going to say 18, because I am 18. As you see, we get 3.14 and 18. So percentage i will allow us to put an integer in, and I think percentage s will allow strings and whatnot. So if you like this way, this is kind of like the C way of doing things, then you can do this. Uh, this right here, that allows us to kind of format it. So now it will go free, and if it wants to, we can even make it 10. And now we'll go up to the 10th value. So yeah, that's kind of one way to do it. I don't really use the C, this format too often, so I can't really tell you too much about it, but there you go. If you wanted to know about it, then that's how you do it. So you put in your string, percentage and then what should be formatted and you you pass in your values relatively so integer is second so integer comes in second that's a number anyways so to find something in a string we could just say here and then go dot find i'm going to remove this and pass in string and then you can pass in what you want to find so if i want to find a url so hello world then if i were to whoops if I were to just say that and run that. And you see we get 8 and 10. So it starts at 8 and ends at 10. So that it starts here, where which is 8, and it ends here, which is 10. 
If you search for something that does not exist, then you will get nil. You can also use dot .match. So match will allow you to, to try and match something to string. So if I go ORL, then it's going to return that string if it finds it. So ORL. If it doesn't find it, so let's go OSRL, they returns nil. So this one returns their position, and this one returns where they are. This can be kind of useful, so let's say um, we have local begin end ending, let's try and do that. And we probably want to put a comma there if I'm correct. And you can make that equal to string dot and we actually want to say dot find, so this will go like that, go like that, and then find URL. Now we can go here and we can say uh, where does it begin? And then we can just say begin. And then we can go back to the we can go to a new line and say end ending. Now, if we run that, and it's been stored in, it has been stored into two variables, which is kind of useful. Because you can see here, it kind of returned two values, just separated by commas. So then we can split them into two different variables by doing this right there. If we want to replace things inside of a string, so let's just uh, bring back our old piece of code here. You can remove that. If you want to replace something in a string, it is relatively simple, it is g sub. And this will replace things in string. So let's say we want to replace things inside of str. And we want to replace all the lowercase o's with an exclamation mark. Do that. And now all the lowercase o's have been turned into exclamation marks. And this says how many. So it returns the new word plus how many things have been changed. Uh, let's say we wanted to change all of the l's into happy face you can do that so then you can go like that he happy face face happy yeah it is very very confusing but yeah you can do that if you wanted to so all the l's has been turned into happy face yeah and that's all i want to actually teach you all there's a lot more but these are just the ones i'm going to show you and i hope you all enjoyed and can now at least do a lot of string functions inside of lua Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.